Praise the Lord, friends. This is Sister Sherry Parrott coming to Far Above Rubies with Sister Erin Holmes' invitation, of which I'm delighted to be invited. And uh, my husband is the pastor of the Beacon of Hope Pentecostal Church in Platt City, Missouri. And I've been doing these uh, devotions with Far Above Rubies for a while, and I'm just thrilled about the book of Acts. <laughs> I mean, the church is built on the book of Acts, right? But today, I want to do something um, I've talked about before, and I've mentioned it, and that is, I've talked to you guys about the Word of Flame, King James Version of the Apostolic Study Bible. Now, I realize this is going to be backwards for you, but... Um, if you have not had a chance to order from the Pentecostal Publishing House this Bible, it makes a great gift for graduates. And I'm not trying to turn this into a uh, promo, even though I am. I'm, I'm apologizing for that. But what I'm going to do is I want to read some of the commentary, which is from apostolic men in the United Pentecostal Church. But um, we are talking about Acts chapter 15. Team. And it's just a very important topic where um, they are dealing with the merging of the Gentiles and the Jews and the church and the laws. Okay. And we have to be careful. You know, there's a fine line between legalism and holiness. And, um, you know, this is what the uh, conversation was in this chapter, please, I always recommend that you go back and read the entire chapter for yourself. And I'm just bringing out some commentary, but I wanted to bring the commentary from the Apostolic Study Bible. Um, starting at chapter 15, verse 10 and 11, neither Jew nor, or, nor Gentile could bear the burdensome yoke. In verse 10, it says, of adherence to the law. Peter recognized that even for the Jews, keeping the Mosaic ordinances could not save them. Rather, it was only through the grace of the Lord Jesus that anyone could be saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9. And in verse 11, in which Peter defended the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, it reflects Peter's last statement in Acts. Peter's words in chapter 15, verse 12, left the opposition silent. Paul and Barnabas then related the miracles and wonders they had seen accomplished among the Gentiles. And then in verses 13 through 14, James, Jesus' brother, um, which is referenced in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, and the head of the church of Jerusalem brought this debate to a conclusion. He, referen uh, he referenced Simeon's, um, which is Simon, referring to Peter. The Aramaic form of Simon is Simeon. And these are all things that we learn in the commentaries, okay? Um, which, But si Simon, he referenced the account of the first Holy Ghost baptism upon Gentiles, which occurred well before Paul and Barnabas began preaching to the Gentiles. God's purpose among any group, regardless of ethnicity, is to call out a people for his name. And then uh, the commentary on verse 15, 15 through 18, though not directly as Directly quoting scripture, James asserted that the words of the prophet agreed with the move of God among the Gentiles that the church had witnessed. And then you can also reference back to Amos chapter 9 verses 11 through 12. God had planned to include the Gentiles from the beginning. And the Gentiles are... Um, you know, they did not go under the Mosaic law, the, the circumcision and, and these type of um, all these little statutes and laws that, that they had as Jewish people. God is telling them through the men of God that he has certain guidelines that they are going to go by. Number one is being filled with the spirit and anyone can receive that whether they are circumcised or uncircumcised. 
And um, so in verse uh, chapter 15, verses 19 through 20, James proposed that the following prohibitions be required of Gentile converts, that they cannot have meat that is offered to idols. Um, they have to ha uh, abstain from sexual immorality or fornication. They can't eat meat that was strangled from an animal or um, they can't eat blood. And so circumcision was not required. And this is a huge, huge debate and argument for the people of God. It got intense, but they came under the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing. They were able to say Gentiles can receive the Holy Ghost just like we did because we've already seen it happening and I'm here to tell you, no matter what the label of our church name is, anyone can receive the Holy Ghost today. And um, it's for everyone. It's for you. It's for your children. It's for those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Ghost is going to be poured out on everybody. There's, we don't, the men do, don't have to go through this, um, these laws of the Jewish laws. Thank God. That we are grafted in. I'm I'm Gentile. I am not of Jewish descent. I wish I were because those are the blessed people of God. But we are grafted in. And if we are Gentiles, you know, the Jewish people thought of them as dogs. And then when they came into the church, they started getting dogmatic with them. But they're telling them, the men of God are telling them, look, they are spirit-filled they can be spirit-filled just like us and they don't have to go through what the mosaic law was with this circumcision i hope that's a little bit more clear there's a lot more reading but we're taking up uh, too much of our time i want you to read acts chapter 15 and just witness to everybody let's get everybody filled with the holy ghost this look at this nice bible this is the Apostolic Study Bible. The commentary that I read was from that reading. Excellent. And I didn't read all of the commentary that was in there. But I'm just saying, let's get everybody filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's not us that fills them. But it is us who were proclaimed to go out and be witnesses. And when they come in, let's not uh, worry about all of the the laws and the things and the regulations. Let's worry about letting the Spirit of God move like He so does so proficiently and so much better than we can. He can move inside of people. He can lead and guide them in every conviction, and He will tell them uh, what He has for them, and so will the men of God. God bless you guys. Go witness to someone. The Holy Ghost is for everybody.